Welcome to Coffee with the Sarlows. I'm Kelly. And I'm Karen. We are a mother-daughter duo of mediums, medical intuitives, psychics, and energy healers offering personal sessions to clients all over the world. And this is our podcast. Coffee with the Sarlows is a platform to share the remarkable experiences of our clients and the messages that are channeled for them from the spirit world. These stories will make you laugh, some will make you cry, and some are certain to be an absolute butt-kicking with love. Our intent for this podcast is to gently and kindly challenge your beliefs, grow your empathy, and help you find pieces of your own self in each one of these individual stories. Before we jump into today's show, we have a few notes for our listeners. Karen and I have personal practices channeling for local and international clients. If the stories in these shows is something you'd like to experience, you can request your own personal session through our website, bysarlo.com. We also have gift certificates available if you wish to gift this experience to someone anywhere in the world. We have a second podcast series called Sips of Sanity. This series is your emotional and intuitive intelligence toolkit. We pick one topic every month and provide you with healthy tools for critical thinking and communication. This series airs the first week of every month. The first show is free and can be found on our website, your favorite podcast platform, or YouTube. The full series can be found on patreon.com forward slash by Sarlo. Patreon is our membership portal with a ton of monthly benefits for those of you seeking to grow your emotional and intuitive intelligence. Karen has a personal blog that explores the beauty and importance of intuitive gifts. There's a question and answer segment that addresses listeners' questions. As we mentioned, you can find the complete Sips of Sanity series here along with handy habit trackers and great reflective questions to help you get the most from the shows. We provide you with guided journeys and music to enrich that experience, and we're running an emotionally intelligent, interactive book club. And for patrons in our top tier, each month we're putting your names into a draw for a free half-hour channeling session with Karen or myself. If you're interested in joining us, head over to patreon.com forward slash by Sarlo. Now, on to the show. Happy Saturday, Kelly Sarlo. Happy Saturday to you too, Karen Sarlo. <laughs> I'm so glad that we get to spend our Saturday mornings chatting. Literally every morning. <laughs> okay. We just involve other people on Saturday. <laughs> True. Remotely. <laughs> True. We're very clicky, if you think about it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, so you have a sheet of names, and I need a female this morning, please. I have sheets, plural, oh, of names. So what country are you picking this the this client? Where, where do they live, Kelly? Iraq. Oh, I love it. Yeah, okay. I'm really excited. I need to branch out some more. I've got Iraq, I've got African, I've got Korean and Spanish names. Oh. So I'm, right now I'm rotating. Um, but I'm going to keep doing more research and having fun. Oh. Mm -hmm. And you know what? One of the things, this is tangential, but one of the things I'm really loving is how invested other countries are in the meaning of names. Yeah. And and also the sounds, and then the two of them combined. Uh, it's mm. just, you. I, I love language, linguists, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So it's just, it's, it's a whole different kind of education. Well, yes. segueing out a little bit here. You and I have just finished reading Trevor Noah's book, Born a Crime. Mm -hmm. And he talks about the significance in South Africa. And I'll say to, to Trevor, I don't want to put it across the board in case that's not entirely correct, everywhere in South Africa. But he talks in his book about how they name people mm -hmm. and how some people were named Hitler. Um, some people were named... Well, he, no. They, like... I think he was mentioning how they have a South African name, but they also have a very English name. Yes. English speaking kind of name, not to say Britain in particular. Um, and I don't, I think they pick it at a certain point. They're not given it. Yes. But the names that, the name that is handed out to them as a South African name is given by the parents. And I was just going to say, thank you for explaining more. I was just going to say that one of the names in the book that he refers to is a person named Be Afraid. And I just, as you're talking about names, I was thinking about the book and what I'm learning about different cultures all over the world. Mm -hmm. So the South African name means be afraid. Ironically, in a very interesting what the fuck kind of way, it was not the Hitler name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, I've chosen a very pretty light name for my rack. Okay, go. And it's Badia. Badia? Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. I know. You know, I, I think about, and, and I love English language, don't get me wrong, but I think about how much we can really butcher with the way that we carry vowels yeah. or any any sound in our mouth where more of a, an American and Canadian uh, sound would be badia, where mm. it's, it's very low in the, in the mouth. Mm-hmm. And then they, they announce, enunciate it, pardon me, much higher, badia. Oh, Badia. so when you're researching the names, are you researching how to pronounce them as well? And Some the tone? of them, yeah. Oh my God, Kelly, thank you so much. Yeah, and I'm and I'm listening to people on TV with different accents uh, and how they, they yeah. kind of carry it and how it comes off the tongue, so. Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's been a fun education. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. So good luck with this one. And, and um, for people that are joining us maybe for the first time, just to explain that what we do by and why we pick random names at the beginning of every podcast show is to keep the confidentiality of all of the clients. Mm-hmm. So unless we have somebody like Dee Dee mm-hmm. that comes on and says, I'm going to use my real name, or a client says, I want my story told with my real name. And we make it clear that they have said that and this is who in, yeah. who in fact they actually are. Yeah, because the whole point is this, is to share people's stories I know you say this all the time, but is to share people's stories so that other people can learn something from it. Yes, it's in our brand new lovely intro. Yes. So hopefully people are catching on to what we're doing and that we're having fun doing it. Okay. So Badia is a client that I have seen many times. And what I did was I put a little sequence of events together of highlights of points I think are worth sharing with others. Oh, okay. Because there was so much to all of her sessions. And I'm going to say she's probably had maybe eight sessions. Mm -hmm. So it all begins and it's all, all of her sessions are centered around medical intuitive. So the very first time Badia calls, and it's all telephone. And I'm saying that because it's very important. Yeah, you can't see her. Exactly. So the very first time she calls, she says, I understand you do medical intuitive. I have been searching all over North America for a medical intuitive. They're very f- hard to find. And they're also very hard to know who would be good at this. Because it's like, how do you really know if they are or they aren't, if they're fake or if they're frauds? She says, so the way that I picked you was because of your podcast shows and the way that your website looks. Thank you so much. And we'll just say quickly here, but trying to give complete credit to Dave Nyber. His company is called Nine Lives Design. Uh, He is excellent and we highly recommend him. Yes. If you're a nice person. Yes. Don't bug Dave if you're not a nice person. (laughs) You're welcome, Dave. (laughs) We want Dave to be treated well. Yeah. (laughs) So she says, this is how I found you. And I listened to all of these different shows. And I really was trying to find all the ones where you talk about medical intuitive. But I realized you really just have to listen to the shows and be one of your groupies because you throw it randomly into different stories. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't, hadn't realized that. I thought in, in doing the content for the shows that I was really good at organizing. I'm not. Well, I, I don't think that's a fair statement. Okay. I, I don't think you can organize a session. We've joked about this many True. times in that we don't keep client files. How in God's name would you list every message that comes through? Yeah. A, there's no memory for it. B, it's all over the board. You'd be too busy writing notes and even the clients won't do it. <laughs> they hit record because they ca- they have to stay present. Yeah. And so if you, you know, it's the whole thing built into our consent. We're asking you about your comfort level first. We need to know that you're consenting because you're comfortable if these things come through. Mm-hmm. But your dead grandfather can come through and tell you about your stomach and inf- um, yeah. stomach infection. Is that a thing? Um, yes. Something going on in your stomach and your bowels and then tell you future related what's going to happen and that you're going to be okay. So all of them blend together. I don't think it's fair to take on the responsibility and say you're disorganized. Okay. And then she says to me, um, I realized listening to the shows um, that you have no medical background and neither does None. your daughter. <laughs> she says, I just so I... said stomach infection. <laughs> he 
somebody could call us and correct us on that. <laughs> um, she says, and I found it quite interesting. She says, but I really liked the idea versus having a doctor who's a medical intuitive. She said, so I was trying to figure out between researching, are there any medical doctors that use intuitiveness? And are there medical intuitives with no medical background? And are they even more accurate or less accurate? What is it, Karen? Mm -hmm. And I said, I have no idea. But it's those are great questions and thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I would actually say it's probably best if you can get us both on a team. Right. And maybe it's a biased opinion. I just think that medical doctors who do follow their, their intuition, thank yeah. goodness you exist. Yeah. Uh, however, I think they have this, this whole the curse of knowledge that they can fill in their own blanks mm. and wonder, okay, is it intuition or am I going, am I oh. leaning on education? And we have nothing to lean on. That's good. That's a good point. Like, y yeah, because the other hmm. thing is, is that if we, if we had a doctor sitting here and we said, oh, I'm getting this and they inferred something, we will immediately hear the guides say, no, that's not it. He's jumping. No, yeah. that's not it. She's concluding. And it's like, oh, okay, I'm being told you're wrong. It's this, it's that. I, yeah, I would, you know what? Maybe one day we will have a medical doctor who is an intuitive, medical intuitive. Hit us up. Only if you're nice. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying this. I like the rule. <laughs> this is going to be a podcast rule. Only if you're nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. People will start putting in their little reviews. <laughs> Great show, so easy to get in contact with, only if you're nice. We'll have to do something funny. We'll have to reach out to Dave and have him put yeah. that down on our Webflow form. Oh, that's Are smart. you nice? <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> okay, so the very first time Badia calls at, on this telephone um, and asks for medical intuitive, the first thing that came out of my mouth, much to my freaking horror, was, you're obese. And I just remembered the human part of me went into, oh my God, I can't believe I just said that to somebody. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, cool your jets, Karen. That is not how you talk to people. This is totally channeling. Settle down. <laughs> so I settled down. Typical day in the office. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and there is this, there, there's this pause on the other end of the line. That's it. And I said to the guides, okay, what do you want me to say? There's just nothing coming from the other end. What do I do? She has thyroid cancer. Oh, my god! And I'm like, oh, my God. So they said, you need to follow it up with mm -hmm. that she has thyroid cancer. And she has questions around this. And by God, Karen, she knows she's obese. And I'm like, okay. They said, just remote view her. She's wearing, you remember those black, thick, rimmed, oh, they're back in style. <laughs> Lady, I got two pairs. <laughs> Do I remember? What, what, what is happening to me right now? I feel like I'm in all these different realities. I know you have those glasses. Mm -hmm. So she's got these big, thick glasses on. She wears an, a, a dress uh, without elastic. And she's sitting in this. So she's in, she's in a sitting position and she has a chair that is like a lazy boy that you can recline back and sleep in. So I don't know if that's still called a lazy boy, but it's a chair she is spending a ton of time in because they're saying that her mobility is very limited. I'm just going to pause for listeners for mm -hmm. a moment and explain that you are remote viewing her. Oh, right. Yes. You did a very good job saying that she called in by telephone. However, you did not explain that you're remote viewing her and seeing what she looks like. Yeah. And so I offered her all of that. I said, body, I said, I can see you. I know that you have black rim glasses, square shaped. I know that you're in a, a dress with no elastic, no a buttons. baby doll. Yeah. Like a nighty. Yeah. I actually think when it's a dress, it's called baby doll. Like it comes up almost like my... Oh, I know what you mean. I just bought two of them. You you did, yeah. I love those. Mm -hmm. So she's in the baby doll, and I said, you're in a chair. It reclines. I'd call it a lazy boy, but I don't know what you'd call it. And I said, but you literally like basically are living in it. 
And I said, so saying to you that you are obese wasn't trying to be rude or vulgar. It's actually to give you validation. And I said, unfortunately, I'm also supposed to tell you thyroid cancer. And I said, and the guides are saying that this is going to make complete sense to you because you've been struggling your entire life with thyroid. But unfortunately, every time you've seen doctors, nobody will confirm that you have a thyroid problem. It's always being undetected. And I said, I really don't understand why. But she says, no, you're right. They just think it's my damn attitude. What? Yeah. Are they running tests? Well, I, I, I don't know all of that. All I can tell you is what came out in the conversation. And I'm going to say what she's willing to tell me. Right. Right? And what the guides are willing to tell me. So I said, um, there's thyroid cancer. And she said, okay. She says, um, when will it be detected? She says, because I've gone in a couple of times and they tell me it's, you know, low range, but they won't tell me that it's in crisis range. And yet I'm obese. And, uh, and they're telling her she has to diet. They're telling her that it's lose weight, do this, get up, get up off your ass. Like there's all these pieces of advice. Um, and, and I want to be careful here because I'm not trying to bash the doctors. I, and, and, and I can understand that clients can withhold mm -hmm. and where doctors have given solid, healthy, very good advice and people don't want to follow it. So I don't want people listening to this thinking I'm judging it. Um, anyone who's hired a nutrition coach knows what you're talking about. Okay. So in our position of channeling, we have to give the messages and be very concise without allowing any kind of um, judgment yeah. or, how do you say that, well, assumptions. You, it's just verbatim. You're just saying exactly what the guides tell you to say. Yeah. So I'm going to say that that came out in the first session with some other bits of information that don't need to be shared to, with that part. And then that's done. So she just asks when this is going to be confirmed and the guides give her a time frame. And I think the time frame there was within two months. Then I get the second call. So we're going to another session now. And she calls and she just gives me her first name. It's telephone every single time. So I won't keep repeating that information. And she says her first name only, medical intuitive, and the guides come in and say, this person has thyroid cancer, she's obese, and I already know she's seen me once before because we asked that after consent. Have you, or pardon me, before consent, have you seen me before? So we know what kind of consent to do. I ask, have you seen Karen or myself? Oh, oh, I do ask that quite often. Yeah. I do ask the very I same. I trust your consent process enough yeah. that if they say, yeah, I saw your mom, Yeah, I will say, okay, we can do this differently. Yeah. So they then tell me that she's been confirmed with cancer and that they want to make sure, well, they're just affirming it again and that she's going to bring this up and tell me. So I asked her if that was correct. I said, buddy, you've seen me before and the guides are saying they told you thyroid cancer. And she goes, oh, you remember me? No, ma'am. <laughs> That's right. I said, no, I don't. I said, the guides have to tell me. They're, I can't remember the clients. And there's no file, there's no memory on it. I said, so no, I'm just going off of what they're telling me right now. Oh, she says, well, you do say that at the beginning of each session. I just didn't know if it was true. I'm not covering my own ass. Yeah. <laughs> Don't write, eh? Let you know how things work. <laughs> yeah. So she says, um, I'm calling because I, I've been diagnosed with the cancer and I want to know if I'm going to live. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, bo both to you and to Badia. Yeah. So she asked the question about, uh, you know, time of death kind of thing or date of death. And the guides say, look, we're not giving a date and a time of death. And we're going to value you as a person to me. Because I don't want time of death or date of death for any client. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be put in that position to to have other people think that I know that about them. These gifts are hard enough to live with and the way people treat us. I don't need that on top of it. Mm -mm. I still have dear friends that I will text from out of town and say, hey, thinking of you. 
And if they're, if I catch them on a not great day, they will say, oh, do you know something? Yeah. I'm like, I'm just, I was just sending you love. Yeah. And and thank you for explaining that. Yeah, it's it's too much power. That's right. And I don't want that over a friend. I don't want that over a partner, a child. Or myself. Or I don't want it, period. Mm-hmm. Um, as I said, these gifts are complicated enough to di- to live with and then to try to live with and cope with other people's um, perceptions of it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, the guides did not give me that answer, but they said that it was terminal and that they would concur with the doctors who've told her that and that it's because of the complications. And she said, go on, explain that. And I said, well, the guides are saying that it's because of the obesity. It's because of the strain on the heart. It's not just thyroid cancer. It has to do with the fact that the body can't um, function healthily her lot with the lungs and her heart, her pancreas is fatigued. Mm-hmm. The digestive system feels like she's 90. There are a whole bunch, her, her adrenals, pardon me, her adrenals are just absolutely done for. Mm-hmm. So there are a whole bunch of other things going on in the body as a result of her immobility. Mm-hmm. So somebody might be listening to this and think, I, I'm, I'm obese or I'm overweight and I'm fine. Yeah, you might be because you might have contained it to a degree or that you're able to continue to be mobile. She is barely moving out of the chair night or day. Mm -hmm. So she's going basically to the washroom. So she's got problems in the lungs and a medical person listening to this might go, yep, that sounds like congestive heart failure or yep, the lungs, blah, blah, blah. Well, they'll know the sequence of events of the organs that will shut down because of one domino effect. That's right. So the guys are explaining to her that this is complication. And and they said to her, this is not your physician's fault because of not telling you about thyroid cancer early enough. And I think that right there is gold. Just gold meaning valuable. Because- if, if they're ready to hear it. Oh, that's a good point. I, I don't disagree on any level that it's gold on any given day. Yeah. I just don't think it's received or perceived that way if they're not ready to hear it and take responsibility for that. That's that's really good, Kelly, because you're talking about where accountability and responsibility is. So I gave her all of those messages, and she was quiet. And the guide said to me, don't speak. S- just dead silence for a while. Don't check in because you and I will do check-ins. We will step into the silence and say, are you okay? We will reach out to the client. And they said, say nothing. She has to think. She's just closing her eyes. You can remote view her. Just leave her be. So this was a moment where the remote viewing really helped me because I could actually tune in to see her with her eyes closed and just let it be. She wasn't fidgeting. She was like she was just relaxing into the information. And I got to tell you, Kelly, this was a moment that made me think of my dad. It made me think of a lesson my dad taught me about being comfortable with silence in relationships. The silence in my own life of being being comfortable to be quiet in the house. No TV, no music. Listen to your soul. Listen, listen. Be still. Listen to a person talking. Listen to, and let them have their silence. Don't try to fill it. I was so grateful to both the spirit guides and my dad so that there was total peace and comfort in giving her silence and letting her be the first to speak. Because I know the old Karen who was a people pleaser would have jumped into the silence because of anxiety. Being a people pleaser, wanting to fix something, maybe wanting to check in to see if I needed to apologize to do something, right? And how many of us don't let there there be silences where people need it to absorb 
and to be able to process. And I, and I, I value that now so much. So I let her come back to the conversation and her response was, as hard as that is to hear, I'm going to decide that I needed to hear that so that I don't feel angry with my physician and I go back to trusting them. Wow. Smart choice. Oh my God, Kelly. She says, because my next question was going to be, is my doctor trustworthy? And she says, and I got to my own answer, listening to what the spirit guides had to say about all of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm recognizing that I wanted to question my doctor's integrity, professionalism, but it was my own behavior. Mm -hmm. And she says, I'm so glad that you were quiet. Were you a little nervous? <laughs> and I laughed. I said, not at all. No, I've sat through where, worse silences than that. <laughs> I said, not at all, hon. You do, and you took your time. You did your work. And I said, what I've learned from some really wonderful dead people and people that used to be on earth and spirits, all of it, is how beautiful. So curious how you're differentiating dead people and people who used to be on earth. <laughs> Just who. Right. Same. Okay. You, you got me. Sometimes it's complicated, you know that, to differentiate between an alive person, a dead person, and a spirit. And I, and I screwed that up. So thank you for correcting me. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, because I think some people will show up and go, I'd like to talk to the people who used to be on earth. And you'll be like, hmm? <laughs> you mean the dead people? Yeah, that's yeah, my but you said in a podcast. <laughs> right. I, yeah, I don't need that to happen. There's enough confusion in the session, so thanks. Um, I'm glad to learn those lessons. Mm -hmm. and, and it's important because some, some dead people have taught those to me, but the spirit guides have too. So have your alive people. Yep. I know many people in our life right now and, and you know previous years who have comfortably sat in silence with us. Mm hmm. Yeah. Together and separately. Yeah. So our session came to an end. Shortly after that, she she simply um, we closed it with her learning the lesson, and um, just with the fact that she could check in again. I don't know if I'm ever going to hear from her, other than perhaps that she shows up in the kitchen someday for a dance. As a dead person. Yes. Right. Oh, sorry. It was an interesting way to end the show. Well, well, no, she's got terminal thyroid cancer. I totally understand. And you know what? We've said this before on other shows. I think there's a long list of people who have made Karen's Kitchen one of their destinations when they cross over. And I think that's wonderful. So I, I welcome her. Should I come down the stairs? Me And find too. Abadia in the kitchen. Me too. I can't. I know you're going to get this because they're in the house. But for the people listening right now, I can't tell you how many times I walk into that kitchen and my heart bursts. I, it, it is such a joy to put the music on and get in there and dance with them. Mm -hmm. Whether the, you know they, they came through because the last time I had seen them or the first time I've met them was when they were dead. Or when the first time I met them, they were alive on earth. Mm -hmm. I'm just so thrilled no matter which way they come through, because both ways, Kelly, they're dancing. Mm -hmm. and, and happy and appreciative and just they just get it. That's wonderful. I, I hope that in whatever her journey is, she's finding peace in it. Me too. And, and power. I'm going to say peace and power. I like that. Thank you for this morning. You're very welcome. Thanks for listening to Coffee with the Sarlows. If you enjoyed the show today, help spread the love with a like, share, or review of the podcast. See you next Saturday with a brand new episode.